You're listening to the Multiverse Fancast, proud member of the Misfit Faction Media Network. All right, then. On with the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Multiverse Fancast. Don't forget, if you guys are listening to us on the go, you can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, basically anywhere you get your podcasts. You can also find more of our content on our website, themisfitfaction.com. There you find links to not only this show, but some of our other shows like MF Uncensored and Cinematic Adventures. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Paul. With me via the Zoom studio is Ronnie. Ronnie, how are you today? I'm doing Okay, how are you? I'm doing okay as well. It is an okay <laughs> time, and we'll have an okay episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's a little better than okay, but... No, we set the bar at okay, and then we see how far we can go above it, or sometimes just kind of limbo under it. I think we'll be way above it. I think we'll be way above it. <laughs> I don't know, depending on the on what we're talking about, because... We decided that we wanted to kick off our like Halloween spooky type season with a character that, well, when you think Halloween, he is a pretty good solid choice. And it's it's funny we never we haven't talked about these movies at all. Yeah, this was also during that time. Like people say that like Marvel and DC are oversaturated right now. This was the point where after X Men hit, every company was trying to create their superhero franchise. Yes. And a lot of people, even though like Marvel's getting a lot of heat nowadays for its lower quality, this was a time where they were throwing out movies that just weren't that good. Yeah. Um, so in accordance with this movie, you also had, or this series of movies, you also had Green Lantern at the time. You had uh, Fantastic Four was around the same time, Daredevil, a lot of, and they, they all kind of look alike. Yeah. Like they all have a very similar look and feel to them and just... I will argue that this first movie is is better than people remember, and the second movie is as bad as people remember. But I still enjoy it, which is weird. It's it's a guilty pleasure movie. And yeah. for those of you guys who don't know what we're talking about today, we're going to be talking about the character and the film series Ghost Rider. So I think you and I saw both together. I want to. Say. I know we definitely saw the first one together. Definitely saw the first one together. Pasta. I would say probably. There's a very good chance we saw the second one together as well. Yeah, the same guys who did Crank, and that should have... It should have worked. It really should have yeah. worked completely, but unfortunately, it just... Well, it didn't. So, let's talk about the origin and the history of this character. So, the character of Ghost Rider, was, he was created by Roy Thomas, Gary Fridlick, and Mike Plug. Those are all names that are definitely not made up. In the 1970s was when the modern more popular Ghost Rider variation. There was like other ones. I think there was like the Phantom Rider and stuff like that, but they were all kind of like not the main Ghost Rider that we're going to be discussing. And for us, like when you, when you think Ghost Rider, what do you think? I I think we think of like the original, you know, Johnny Blaze and not so much any of the other ones because that's all you really saw in media was Johnny Mm Blaze. I think you saw the other, the second one, Where was he? Was he? Wasn't he in something too? Gabriel Luna's portrayal as Robbie Reyes was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, to me, that's why I think of Johnny Blaze. And I think of someone that is like too overpowered, but in a good way. Yeah. So like when I think Ghost Rider, there are certain things that I think off the top of my head. Number one is obviously the flaming skull. It's iconic. It, it's got a very yep. unique look to it. And then even though Robbie Reyes doesn't use one, obviously the motorcycle, you got to go with yeah. like the, and the leather and all those things. Like he was created at a time where it was very anti-establishment, very like fight the power type mentality. And the anti-hero, and we did an episode on anti-heroes and, and why they're so popular, but Ghost Rider is a perfect example of like he embodies the the seventies and eighties and even like the early nineties to a fault. Like each version yeah. of Ghost Rider has a very has something unique to their look, and you have three main ones. You have Johnny Blaze, uh, Danny Ketch, and then Robbie Reyes. You have some other ones like uh, Alejandro Jones and Carter Slade, the Phantom Rider, who we did see in yeah. the Ghost Rider film, which is still a great scene. But yeah. like those are the three main continuity. Ghost Riders, like there was like a, a Ghost Rider 2099 and all that stuff during the whole 2099 yeah. series, but those are the three that we're going to be talking about the most. So, do you do you have a preference on Ghost Rider? You feel like you're just a Johnny Blaze kind of guy? 
I'm kind of just a Johnny Blaze because, oh yeah, that wasn't too big into the comics. So the only time I really saw a Ghost Rider were the movies because I didn't watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So I don't know how the Roddy Reyes character really is portrayed in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think um, I would say probably 90% of the people would think of Johnny Blaze. Yeah. So let's talk about his origin story. Uh, obviously, it's known in the from the movies and the comics that he makes a deal with the demon Mephisto in order to save his father, and he becomes the Ghost Rider. And you know, most of his stories are about sacrifice, damnation, redemption, and like it. It's all relatable. Like the things we would do for family. Like I, I don't know yeah. what I would do if I had to save a family member, especially you know someone as important as that. But for me, like you think Johnny Blaze, you, he's a very tragic character, and for me, like I always liked him. A little bit better in the comics because like in the in the movies they go too goofy with him yeah and and i like nicholas cage depending like I, nicholas cage <laughs> is one of those weird actors where if he's in a role if he's subdued i find him much more enjoyable like obviously yeah. he's known for his his big and his crazy and all that stuff but for me like i really like, I could watch, like, National Treasure and stuff like that, and, you know, yeah. like, even, like, Con Air, where he's a little bit more subdued, even though his accent keeps changing. But for me, like, Nicolas Cage is one of those actors where you think – he he's a big superhero fan, like, a big, like, huge nerd. I yeah. think he named, like, his son Cal or something like that, like, after Cal el Yeah. Something, like, ridiculous like that. But also, like, when you think superhero, he's just not the person that comes to mind, especially for a character like Johnny Blaze. Yeah, no, not at all, because he's got, like, that – that goofy look to him, I would say, where, you know, like, you think of a superhero and you're thinking, like, the muscles and the looks for the for the most part, mm-hmm. you know, and then you got Nicolas Cage who's got they, nothing special about him. They had to CGI, that. they CGI'd the muscles onto him in, in, yeah. in the movie. Like, there's one scene where he's in a towel and, like... I remember, like, young, when I was younger and I couldn't, I didn't have a good enough eye for visuals. I would see that. I was like, oh, wow, Nicolas Cage got shredded. And then, yeah. like, in later years, I was like, those aren't real, stupid. <laughs> that was also before the time where, like, superhero actors would get super shredded for their roles. Like, that really didn't, like, obviously, superhero actors had always kind of gotten into shape for their roles. Like, Christopher Reeve famously trained with, I want to say, David Prowse, the guy who played Darth Vader's physical points. Yeah. But, like, and he put on, like, a ton of muscle for it, and he was very lean also. But a lot of superhero actors, they didn't... Like, Michael Keaton wasn't jacked to play Batman. Nah. Like, Val Kilmer either. Like, none of those actors really got, like, super shredded to play their superhero counterparts. And you get to, like... This is the time where people start saying, well, maybe superheroes should look like superheroes. It really yeah. wasn't until your Chris Hemsworth and your Chris Evans and, and basically all your Chris's, Chris Pratt, that yeah. um, <laughs> superhero actors decided, hey, we need to get, like... We need to look the role, too. And it's not just yeah. CGI and... You know, again, Nicolas Cage, he's not, like, I'm sure he might be in great shape, but in all honesty, I can't imagine. No, that he's he like, doesn't so- have that, when you think of superhero, he doesn't have that look. Yeah. You know. Agreed. Now, for Ghost Rider, there's, Ghost Rider's a two-pronged character. It's not only Johnny Blaze or whoever the, the human element is, but it's also the spirit of vengeance. And, I'm, oh my god, I forget the name of the character that actually is the Zarathos or something like that is the name of the demon, yes. the spirit of vengeance. And for me, like it was always a really good Hulk kind of mentality. And we've talked about the Hulk. Yeah. We did a character study on the Hulk when we kind of talked about how it sucks that they got rid of that in the MCU where basically it's no Hulk, no, like it's, it's all one character. Yeah. Do you think that Ghost Rider does better when it's a little bit more that whole, split personality like I, that is one thing that they portrayed really well in the movies where ghost rider comes out when there's evil present yeah I, I i think it's good to have those the separation between human and demon um you know almost like that and hide mm-hmm. you know kind of thing uh you know two different lives but it's one person um and like you said like in the movie it works really good you know uh where He's not needed, you know, meaning, you know, the demon isn't needed unless something's in danger. Kind of like with, we just saw recently with Blue Beetle, Mm -hmm. you know, um, at the beginning of the movie where he's like, come on, get out of me, get out of me. Like, (laughs) get me the beetle suit. And then 
not until it was like immediate danger did it you know did it come alive yeah i don't know like for me you know, you think about these characters, and Ghost Rider is considered one of the most powerful characters in the um, in the Marvel comics. Like he went toe to toe with the Hulk more than once, and he's really like not played around. So I I don't think that that came that was as el- relevant in the movies. It was not portrayed as such. Like he was powerful, but he wasn't like god level tier type character no they definitely like nerfed them in it. a little bit so let's talk we're going to spend some time we're going to talk about the first two movies and we're going to talk about him in agents of shield and then we'll kind of do our final thoughts but before that we are going to take a quick break and when we come back we are talking all things ghost rider but first a quick break Hey guys, it's Paul, and the Misfit Faction is looking for your help. We are trying to grow not only our network, but also grow our brands, and the best way to do that is if you guys are looking to start your very own podcast. Maybe you guys have been listening to us for a while. Maybe it's something you guys have always wanted to do, but you're not sure how to get started. If you go to podbean.com slash Misfit Faction, you guys will get a month of free podcasting on us. That is a gift from us. So make sure if you guys are looking to start your own show, you reach out to us and go to podbean.com slash Misfit Faction. Also, maybe you guys have your own online business or service you're always looking to grow and advertising is a very big part of that if you guys go to sponsorship.podbean.com slash misfit faction you guys can get a hundred dollars worth of free advertising again as a thank you from us to you guys that's sponsorship.podbean.com slash misfit faction all right we are back and now we are talking the 2007 oh my god that was so long ago film ghost rider Ah, yeah graduated high school Oh, I I was out of high school. Oh God, I need to get out. <laughs> this this one hurts. This one stings a little bit. Yeah. All right. So coming out on two thousand and seven, February sixteenth, two thousand seven. So we're getting close to the anniversary of this one. It stars yeah. the following: Nicolas Cage, Ava Mendez, Wes Bentley, Sam Elliott, Donal Logue, Donald Logue, and Peter Fonda. Oh. All right. So let's start with Nick Cage as Johnny Blaze. Oh my God, is he bad? Oh, did you watch uh, Manifest? Yeah, I I used to watch it when it was like on TV, mm-hmm. not on Netflix. So um, yeah, the guy who plays Zeke plays young Johnny Blaze in this. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. I didn't even realize. But yeah. anyway, so Nicholas Cage plays Johnny Blaze. He's a motorcycle stuntman, and basically he gets tricked into making a deal with Mephisto because you know it was Mephisto all along. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still waiting for them to introduce him into the MCU proper because the problem is Agents of Shield introduced Ghost Rider and it introduced Robbie Reyes and it did have a brief cameo of Johnny Blaze, but they have never established anything else. Yeah, yeah. So he gets so in in the MCU technically because Agents of Shield is now considered its own separate continuity. It's very confusing. Yeah. So I really hope they do bring. Because I think they were supposed to do some sort of spinoff with Robbie Reyes from it, but it just never uh, it never materialized. I think it was when Disney was really focused on buying everything. Yeah, but I would have watched it. It was re- he was really good as, and we'll talk about him in a second. But so the story is very simple. Johnny Cage sells his soul, and Mephisto is like, "Hey, I'm going to cure your dad's cancer," and then his dad dies four seconds later. Yeah, because that is typical Mephisto type style, and. Basically, what he does is he spends the next like 20 years of his life running away from everything and doing all these super insane stunts. I love how in this movie he's like super famous. I could yeah. not tell, I could tell you maybe three of those types of athletes, you know, like stunt uh, performers or yeah. extreme sports kind of guys. And most of them are like just the very popular ones, like Sean White and yeah. stuff like that, Tony Hawk. But like, I wouldn't reckon like people recognize him on the street. They're asking for autographs. He's super famous. I'm like it. I hate to say it, but like that sort of stuff just does not entertain anymore as much. It doesn't. But if you think about it, 2007, that's like pure prime jackass. Oh yeah. That's around the jackass time. Yeah. (laughs) I'll actually give you that one. 
But here, here's where the movie starts to get away from it. The, the opening scene's fine with all the Mephisto stuff. There's a great shot of Peter Fonda, who plays Mephisto. He's walking, and then thunder crashes, and you can see the outline of what Mephisto looks like in the comics on, as, like, a shadow. Yeah. It's a really great shot because, obviously, they don't – they play it very safe with certain creature effects. Johnny Bla- – Ghost Rider looks fantastic in this movie. I'll, oh, yeah. I'll never take anything away from that. Apparently, they did an actual <laughs> CGI – or, like, an actual br- – scan on hit on Nicolas Cage's head so that way they can do the skull exactly how his head looks and I thought like his first transformation is really good and then you know anything subsequent is still a lot of fun but some of the other effects are just really rough to look at they are even for like you know a lot of times when we look at these quote unquote older movies I mean things only you know 16 almost 17 years old but still like when we look at these, like, from now, we're like, wow, that's rough. But even back then, it you knew it was pretty rough looking. And that, that just goes to show, like, they put no effort slash money into this movie. Mm-hmm. I think all the, all the money went towards Ghost Rider and how he looked. And like I said, he looked fantastic. The motorcycle yeah. looked fantastic. That stuff looked really good. The problem was, I don't even think it's a budget thing I th- or an effects thing at the time. It's just that the way they chose to portray some of those other demon-type characters yeah. was just okay. Like, I did not like how they... Like, Blackheart in the comics does not look like that. He looks like like a, an actual giant black demon. Like, yeah. he looks, like, actually scary. And then you have Mephist... They call him Mephistopheles in this, but I'm still mm-hmm. going to call him Mephisto. Mephisto literally looks like the actual devil. Like that's what he's yeah. supposed to look like in in Marvel comics. He's basically the equivalent of, and that's something that they've you know kind of gotten away from. But so basically, the story takes place after Johnny Cage makes his deal, and again, this is where the movie starts losing me. They give him all these weird quirks, mm-hmm. like he's eating jelly beans out of out of a martini glass. Like he doesn't drink. Okay, okay, I get you don't drink, but what? Like yeah. really? And then. Like, it, him drinking, like, the coffee out of the pot. Like, some of these things would make a lot more sense if it was after this demon inside him activated. I could see him doing some weird yeah. things. But, like, otherwise, he's just, like, a weird dude. Yeah. It, it's... Again, I think the the way they chose to portray certain things and certain characters just didn't work right. at all. You know? Like, why are you why are you giving this guy all these different quirks when there's nothing quirky about him? You know, like when you think of somebody that does these stunts, you think of someone like like like, like a badass, you know, like you know, hard, you know, a hardened person and mm-hmm. all this, and it's like jelly beans. It's like it, what? it's very it's very jarring, especially considering when Matt Long plays the character. He's very like a lot more serious, and he's like a normal dude. And then he experiences yeah. this terrible trauma, and you would think like he would just be he would be more dark and like more depressed. Like also, Johnny's very well aware that something's not right. Like he knows that he can't be hurt, basically, and that's why he's yeah. doing these crazy stunts. So Blackheart arrives onto Earth, and he's looking for this contract, the contract of San Venganza, basically. And I think they say it in the opening credits. Like, it was a, a town outside of, you know, the area where basically they yeah. all sold their soul. It's like a contract worth a thousand souls or something like that. Yeah. And that's what Blackheart's there for. And he's looking for help from the hidden. They're three fallen angels, and they bonded with different elements, air, earth, and water. I didn't mind how they were portrayed. I really just didn't like there's this weird scene where Blackheart's like walking and like when he first appears and like it's raining fire. And I was like, okay, all right, that's pretty cool. And then it yeah. stops and he does like a, almost like a jump scare type, like sh- showing his demon face. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's weird. <laughs> this is also when, like, who are you trying to scare? But anyway, yeah, this is also the time where they were really trying to make Wes Bentley happen. Like he's another actor that they really tried to make happen. And I like him enough. You know, this was also, I think this, this was definitely post American beauty. Yeah. So, like, obviously he was he was well known, but now they were really trying to push him. So <coughs> they team up, and now Johnny runs into Roxanne Hart, his who played by Ava Man. Roxanne Simpson, excuse me. Roxanne Hart's from Megamind. I need to lay down. 
<laughs> played by we got to talk about that movie at some point Megamon. i love that movie yeah. but played by ava mendez and she's another one who they, they they don't know what to do with her in this movie it's just like oh we need a love interest you don't need you know a love interest it's, again she was big in like that you know early to like late kind of 2000s and it's just you know what let's get some big name people to kind of sell this movie right you know you have nicholas cage who's nicholas cage right everyone knows who he is back in around this time everyone knew ava mendez sam elliott you know like these were all like big name people to have in there and that's kind of what was trying to draw because no one knew who ghost rider was other yeah. than your comic book fans so this was a way to bring in those people that weren't fans of comic books and again this was the time where they were trying to make things happen and it wasn't until iron man that really things started to these were a lot of cash grabs and a lot of like hey these things are popular might as well take advantage you know i don't remember which x-men we were on at this point but we were up there so again they didn't know how to write for her they didn't know what like first it was you know i'm just doing this interview because my boss told me i had to do this interview but hey, you're really charming and I really like you. And then, hey, you stood me up and I'm mad at you. And then in the next scene, she's there like, hey, I get it. Like, I understand. Want to make out? And then you tell me you're a fire demon type thing. Yeah, right. They did not know how to write for her whatsoever. And it it was a little frustrating. Because again, you could have had this exact movie, this exact same movie without Ava Mendez in it at all. And for the most part, it still would have happened the exact same way. With the exception of... (laughs) That was the motivation for him to actually go be a hero and bring the contract yeah. over there. So that's probably the only only change. But otherwise, I like Eva Mendes, but again, she's another actress who dis- – she hasn't done anything in a while. No. I liked her in uh, The Other Guys where she plays uh, Will Ferrell's wife. Yes. Yeah, that's still so good. So after, the, after Blackheart rallies the troops, Mephisto decides, hey, got to activate my rider. Because, like, I guess that's, like, his his thing. He has a writer. Always has a writer. Yep. And we get our first transformation scene. And it's, it's again, I like the transformation scene. I like the music. It's written very cheesy. It, the, the, yeah. the writing in this movie is super cheesy. Like, Wes Bentley's, like, like he has his first conversation with the Ghost Rider. And he's, like, and Ghost Rider says something very short. And he's, like, we're not going to have a meaningful conversation, are we? I'm, like, really? You're a yeah. demon lord of hell. And that's what you're going to go with? <laughs> but anyway, a lot of people die in this movie, though. I will give it. I will give it its kudos. They kill a lot of people in this movie, which should happen when you have Ghost Rider. This movie should have been rated R. But again, this was also yeah. they. Sh- they should have done this movie as a, like a Blade style movie. Yeah, it would have been so. I would love to see Blade and Ghost Rider team up. Oh, that'd be great. I would not be surprised if we get that. Well, they they want to do a Midnight Suns type movie. That that'd be the way to yeah. go. Uh, I'd be okay if they also brought back Gabriel Luna as uh, Robbie Reyes. Mm-hmm. Anywho, yeah. so now we get like the main crux of the movie where it's all right, I gotta defeat these three guys and then I have to, you know, fight the boss. It's very video game ish, yeah, uh, with a little drama thrown in. I do one of my favorite scenes though, I'm not gonna lie, is when Blackheart attacks Roxanne and his motorcycle buddy. He kills him though, unfortunately, yeah. Donald Logue. And Johnny shows up and like Blackheart attacks him. And he like instantly transforms, and he tries to do the penance there, and it doesn't work. I, I that's a great scene. I like that one. Yeah, I got no soul to burn. Like I'm done. <laughs> Fun fact: you know who cameos in this movie? Rebel Wilson. Rebel Wilson. Yes, yeah, she plays the girl in the alley, and like yeah. she gets interviewed later on. You know, like. Yeah. <sighs> but it was what a weird like one of her first roles, I think. I would I would probably say yes without looking it up. Without I, I would without say it's doing definitely probably research. one of her first ones ever. But so he, Blackheart kidnaps Roxanne. All three of the, the demons are pretty much defeated. And Johnny has to go save the day with the help of Carter Slade, who he has met throughout the course of the movie, who does his final transformation just to bring him over. The, like he knew where he needed to go. Yeah. Why? Well, it's a great shot. It is a one. And that was a, a killer shot from the trailer, too, with the, both of them yeah. riding out there. It's really, really cool. And then Carter Slade's like, all right, going to die now. Like, yeah. What? <laughs> You couldn't just like just like in a hole. No, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. And I'm gonna die now. But anyway, who? so he ends up defeating Blackheart, who becomes Legion. Who's the? They're two separate characters in in, in the comics, yeah. which is hilarious. But 
and he's like, oh, I'm going to stay as Ghost Rider. To There's no reasoning behind it because he doesn't go to save people. He goes to save Roxanne, and then he decides, yeah. you know what? I'm going to use this power you gave me, and I'm going to beat you up. Like, yeah, I'm, right. I'm going to be a good guy. Wait, what? It makes no <laughs> sense. This movie's so poorly written. And yeah. they relied on visuals, and they relied on star power, and they relied on the momentum of comic book movies at this time. However, on a budget of $110 million, I'll say 150 for from our marketing, it walked away with $228.7 million. Like, what? It actually, you know, $14 of that is us, just so you guys know. Yeah, right? I, again, I think the reason it made its money was because of the names you had attached to it. Mm-hmm. You know, like, back then, Nicholas... Anything with Nicolas Cage, people were going to go see. You could maybe even argue with Ava Mendes. Ava Mendes was more just that eye candy oh, for the I guys. I completely agree. You know, Sam Elliott, big name back then. I don't know, Logue was a big name back then. So, I mean, like, you had all these, like, big name for back then people that kind of drew that audience. And, you know, what it was due is it was one of those 2006. Seven. If I, if I'm thinking right. That was like the height of those paranormal activity and oh, I don't right I don't all that kind of stuff with all like those hauntings and those scary movies and stuff like that with supernatural stuff happening. Let's take a peek. I hated those the paranormal activity movies. I remember having to go see them. I, I'm not a big jump scare kind of guy. Yeah. All right. Let's see. 2007 in film. All right. The highest grossing films of 2007. You ready? Pirates yep. of the Caribbean, World's End, Harry Potter uh-huh. and the Order of the Phoenix, Spider-Man 3, this was a Spider-Man 3 year, Shrek the Third, Transformers, oh. Ratatouille, I Am Legend, The Simpsons Movie, National Treasure, Book of Secrets, and 300. So you definitely had a fair amount of movies rolling around. Yeah. So, like, you had some really good things. Let's see. I'm, I have the whole list. I'm gonna. We have Alpha Dog, which was in January, which I'm, a, I'm actually a fan of. I'm just picking epic movie. Oh, God, this was the, the parody <sighs> movie generation. Oh, God, what a terrible, terrible time to be alive. Uh, let's see. February, uh, February, Ghost Rider. There it is. Let's see. Black Snake Moan, Wild Hogs, Zodiac, 300. Uh, let's see. Let's see. TMNT. That's one. Blades, Blades of Glory. That's my second time referencing that in a podcast this month. Let's see. I'm trying to think what else. Some re- Red Line. I remember that movie. Hot Fuzz. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> so yeah, 2007 was not a it's not a dull year, but Spider-Man 3, getting towards like the summer blockbuster. Shrek the Third, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, which we mentioned. Like so, there was a lot of things happening, but it was definitely towards the end. Fantastic Four: Rise yeah. of the Silver Surfer was the same year. Uh, let's see, Evan Almighty, Live Free or Die Hard. That's awesome. We got some good ones. Again, they're on Order of the Phoenix at this point. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Hairspray. I don't know what, why we're still going through this, but I'm already hot. Oh my god, <laughs> hot rod right came. There. Hot rod came out at the same year as Ghost uh, Ghost Rider. That's hilarious. That's great. Oh my god, I would love to see like a competition between the two of them. Oh, uh, all right, that's done. I'm, I can't. Super bad this year. Super bad. God. Two thousand seven. Two thousand seven was a solid year. Wow. Yeah. But anyway. So let's move uh, really quick. Star City rating for the first Ghost Rider. Oh, man. I think we're going to go like a 2.5. I'm going to go 2.5. It is completely average. Yeah. It is right down the middle. I could still watch it, but I will never put it on. Yes, correct. If it's one of those, like, I'm flipping through, nothing's on, but this is on TNT or whatever. Yeah, I will not actively be like, i got to watch some Ghost Rider right now. No. <laughs> All right, so here we go. <laughs> Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance. So two things happen with Spirit of Vengeance. One, brand new director and writer set. Okay? Yeah. So I want to say, if I'm looking back at the first one, the first one was, let's see, let's see. I'm trying to see who wrote it. Uh, the screenplay and directed by Mark Steven Johnson. So the director and the screenwriter were the same person. Here you've had the, uh, the screenplays by Scott Gimble, Seth Hoffman, and David Goyer. Oh, David Goyer, our, our, yes. one of our favorites. Directed by Neville, Neville Dean slash Taylor, which are the same guys that did uh, Crank and Crank High Voltage and all that stuff. 
and I I do love Crank. It's that is such oh, a, yes. those are so wild and out of their movies, but I love them. Yeah. And here we go. Now we're we're here. And the second thing they changed was they r- really reduced the budget on this one. So the first one I think we mentioned had a budget of 110 million dollars. This one had mm-hmm. a budget of 57 to 75 million dollars. That is a huge decrease. Typically in sequels, you go the opposite way. Yeah, which was weird because when the original or the first movie made you, you doubled your money, right? They spent 110 and made over 220. Mm-hmm. Like they and make you take that and you don't use any of it. <laughs> <laughs> like they 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 make the joke in Twenty Two Jump Street about like throwing more money at something will somehow make the product better. It's a great moment, but yeah, yeah they went the. What's opposite. crazy too is you didn't have any big names other than Nicolas Cage and Idris Elba. I mean, nowadays, Idris Elba, but back then, two thousand twelve. I mean, Idris Elba was a name, but he wasn't as big as he is like in the past like five years. Yeah, so. Let's just go through this really quick. So Nicolas Cage comes back as Johnny Blaze. They kind of re... It's it's almost like a, a reboot sequel, which has become more more and more popular. Like, you got your Halloweens. Like, they, they became much more famous yeah. for it. But there, there's a very rebooty, sequel-y kind of feel to this movie, and it's it's very strange. But mm-hmm. he returns. They Originally, they wanted Matt Long to play this, the younger version again, who he was set to yeah. reprise, but eventually he got replaced by Ewitt Christian Lefter. <laughs> I... I in, I can't. I don't know. I, that I one, do not. That's that's weird. But uh, you have Johnny Withworth as Ray Kerrigan slash Blackout again. Very different in the comics than they did on this. Mm-hmm. Fergus Reardon as Danny Ketch. So obviously Danny Ketch is one of the other Ghost Riders. Let's see. I didn't even. I don't even think I realized that at the time. Syrian Hins as Mephisto slash Rourke because they decide to completely revamp the character. Yeah. And it's very strange, but anyway, I again another character that another actor that would go on to play Steppenwolf, and you know, also not be loved universally. <laughs> Violet Placido as Nadia, Idris Elbow as Moreau, Christopher Lambert of Mortal Kombat fame as Methodus, Anthony Head as Benedict from Buffy fame. Let's see, and that's pretty much the biggest members of the cast. But so this movie, God, it should have been so much better. And it just wasn't, and I'm really upset. There are some good things in this movie. Um, the action scenes are a little bit better, but then they they make some yeah. weird creative. They never show him actually transform in this movie, which I guess that's the reason why the budget dropped. They had to get very creative with certain aspects, but then they got really weird with other aspects. Like there's this yeah. one shot where he gets like hit by something and he just starts spinning around in midair, and it's very very strange. Some of the visuals in this movie are just pure the problem is you can't make a sequel or even like a reboot sequel and change the style so dramatically that it's like what the hell am i watching because the the thing with (laughs) with the first movie and this movie is a like you said you don't need to change the style because especially since the style worked yeah in the first movie the style worked now if the style didn't work obviously yes then you need to change it but the fact that it worked and the reason the movie wasn't as good is due to the fact that the writing was poor. If all they did was basically take the same kind of movie with better writers, this could have been better than the first one. In all honesty, this movie, the outline, like if you were to be like, here, here's the movie we're going to make, here are the main plot points. So on paper, it sounds fine. It is just yeah. poorly, poorly executed. And again, it's adding in the style of the wrong directors. Like I like... The directors, I really do. Like I said, I love the Crank movies, but the Crank movies also knew exactly what they were supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. So this these this movie comes out, and again, on paper, it sounds really good. Basically, Danny is the son of the devil, and the devil wants to get him back so that he could take his power for his own and ta- basically take his body. Because yeah. the devil walks on earth and he takes different forms and blah, blah, blah. This movie also has some very interesting narration choices and exposition choices yeah. that they didn't have in the first movie. Again, it went it went goofy-er. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they they didn't really think it through. No, it's, it's, it's Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider is not goofy. Ghost Rider is scary. Yes. Intimidating. I want scary. I want... 
I would have much rather had a Ghost Rider TV show in the vein of the Punisher TV show. Yes. Oh, it would have worked. It would have a thousand percent worked. Take like the Punisher and mix it with the Marvel Halloween special thing that we got. Oh yeah, the Werewolf uh, by Night. Werewolf. Yeah, Werewolf by Night. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I'd, I'd watch. <laughs> you that. know, like mix those two together, and that's Ghost Rider. I I I would actually be all about that. So. Basically, Ghost Rider gets involved by accident, of course. Like, it's just the way that it is. And he's been in, like, hiding throughout this entire time, which is, yeah. you know. But Moreau, played by Idris Elba, promises him a cure if he if he helps. So he gets involved. There are some good moments in this movie. There really are. Like, the, the scene in the mining camp where he takes control of the mining equipment was really cool. Yeah. Like, and that's out of the comic books. Like, that kind of Ghost Rider type moment yeah. where anything he rides, he transforms. So I was all about that. I also do like the ending fight scene where mm-hmm. like or like the chase scene for the most part. But otherwise this movie is just super forgettable. Yeah. Uh, it's super forgettable and again, I, I think it suffered because they um, they basically cut their budget in half. Mm-hmm. And it ended up I mean it ended up making money. You know, it, again, the budget was what fifty to seventy-five million, and it ended up making almost one hundred and thirty-three, which is great so, on paper, right? Like, like doing the math, like, hey, that's a good return. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, a hundred if a movie's making one hundred and thirty-three million dollars in the box office in twenty twelve, it's not a good movie. Yeah, let's just jump right to the Star City rating on this. I'm gonna give it a two. I'm gonna agree. I was kind of debating between a two and a one five. I give it a two uh, because there are like if it's on, I'll put it on. Like, yeah. But it, I, again, I I don't remember as much of this movie as I thought I was going to. Yeah, it's, it's one of those it's background noise. Oh yeah, kind of movie thing. So moving forward, originally the directors were discussed possibly uh, producing another one and having somebody else direct it. Cage was interested in coming back, and you know, obviously it made money, so like it was going it was going <laughs> to happen at the point. But then yeah. once the film rights to Ghost Rider reverted back to Marvel Studios in 2013, they didn't want it, they couldn't make another movie, especially with that. Concept. I could see him maybe appearing in, in Secret Wars. I could see that. Yeah. Happens. I'd be okay with that. That'd be really fun. And it's in 2016 that Robbie Reyes was introduced to the MCU through Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I, like, they did a fantastic job. Like The duality between him and the, and the demon and the visual effects were, were surprisingly good for the most part. But yeah. I know you didn't watch any of you didn't watch Agents. any of yeah you didn't watch Agents of the Shield. It's not bad. I actually really do enjoy it. And this version gained his powers after he and his brother were attacked by a street gang called the Fifth Street Locos. Um, they uh, they thought Robbie was his uncle Eli Morrow. His brother gets paralyzed and Robbie was about to die, but a good Samaritan Johnny Blaze rescues them and revives Robbie by giving him the spirit of vengeance. So we never see Johnny Blaze at, in like his human form. We only see him in his Ghost Rider. And he, so like Robbie thinks that he sold his soul to the actual devil. And the cool thing about him is he uses a car and they like jack up the car. It is really cool. But I know you didn't watch it, so I don't want to go too far with it. But they do a really good job with it. But in 2016, Luna discussed plans for Reyes to re- feature in his own television show following Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. In later interviews, they stated that they hoped Norman Reedus would portray Johnny Blaze. Which maybe like five years ago would have really worked, but now, yeah, uh, not so much. Not so much. In 2019, it was announced that the television series based on Robbie Reyes was uh, would have premiered on Hulu in 2020, but unfortunately, later that year, <coughs> on September 25th, 2019, Deadline reported the series was no longer moving forward. Hulu decided this happened due to a cre- creative impasse, but would eventually with would potentially shop it around. So obviously, we haven't heard anything since. But I would really enjoy seeing some Robbie Reyes in well, the- I mean, they should do I mean it's kind of late now but they should do like a Halloween special on you know Disney Plus first to see how you know the fans receive the character mm-hmm. and then maybe start introducing him into the movies and stuff yeah I'd be okay with that and they could do some really good work with the character and I, I hope they do especially with Blade kind of we're not hearing good things about Blade, unfortunately. Yeah. But I I do really hope that they have something, something in the works for it. Yeah. But, 
Yeah, so that's pretty much all of our uh, our thoughts on Ghost Rider. Any other lasting thoughts about the character? No, that's pretty much it. Again, he's he is a badass. He is one of the biggest, baddest, strongest in the MCU uh, that we've ever had. And I just want to see them. I, I want to see it on the big screen and done right. Would you prefer? If they were to team him up with the character, would you prefer like a contrasting Possibly. character? Like a con- that'd be great, but different, different, con- totally different comics. But would you <laughs> prefer if they put him with a contrasting character, like a Spider Man or somebody, somebody very like fun mm-hmm. and morally one way, or would you prefer him be with a similar character like Punisher? I, I would like to see him with someone similar. Mm-hmm. You know, like you said, like a Punisher type of character, some someone that like it kind of borders that anti-hero kind of line that we have. Okay, I can I can get behind that. All right, so moving on, fan feedback Friday. If you were trapped in a haunted house for twenty-four hours, which superhero would you want there to protect you? All right, we have Constantine, Doctor Strange, Zatanna, a second Doctor Strange, the Ghostbusters. <laughs> that's funny and Etrigan the Demon oh very Etrigan the Demon is oh. another good one he's a very good one alright so if you guys are looking to participate in Fan Feedback Friday it's very simple all you have to do is go to our Facebook page every mo- every Friday between 8am and 9am Eastern Standard Time Fan Feedback Friday is there so make sure you guys like, comment and share your thoughts whatever the question may possibly be you can also find more of our content on our website themisfitfaction.com you can also find us on all of the social media we're on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok just type in The Misfit Faction or The Multiverse Fancast and odds are you'll find some of our stuff But that is going to wrap us up for today. As always, I'm Paul. I'm Ronnie. And we'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Back in a flash.